Hey everybody, Nerical Murakami here, and it has been far too long since I have done uh, a Let's Play video. I've been ridiculously busy just trying to deal with everyday life and college and blah 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 blah. And since it's spring break now, 2018, um, I'm going to go and do some videos for a game I've been playing quite a bit of. This game is Plague Inc. Evolved. And it is quite a unique game. It's been out for, I don't know, a couple years now, but I, I'm i still playing it. It's, it. it's a blast. It actually sort of turns a certain aspect of gaming on its ear. Usually when you're playing uh, a lot of games, you are trying to be the hero and you're trying to prevent uh, your world from being destroyed by whatever. In this case, you are the destroyer of the world in the form of various pathogens, uh, bacterial infections, virus, you know, fungus, um, interesting little things, a, a Neurax worm, which, uh, as you see here, says it burrows into the brain. So, yeah, a little mind control there. Uh, parasites, uh, prion, uh, half of these I'm not, I'm not sure which ones up to this point are real. I think actually up to this point they may or may not be real. Uh, a necroa virus. Hey, you know, what's a world destruction game without a zombie apocalypse? Uh, nanovirus, you know, one of those science will destroy us all sorts of scenarios. Bioweapons, very real. Uh, and a, a pretty unique aspect of the game. Uh, Simeon Flu, this one was added when uh, the whole reboot of Planet of the Apes came about. So, gee, guess what that one's about. The most recent um, pathogen, if you will, the Shadow Plague, which is a vampire apocalypse. Uh, I have not quite mastered this one yet, but uh, I do plan on doing a video on that one. But we're going to start today with uh, the basics, the first uh, pathogen that you uh, get into with this game uh, called Bacteria. Um, as you go along and you play and you get better at each scenario, you will be able to unlock uh, genetic codes. Um, you can put in these little uh, codes to give you a, a certain advantages depending on the situation. Since I'm just going to run through the normal iteration of bacteria, we're just going to stick with what we have. But um, you can do an ATP boost. This gives you bonus DNA at the beginning. Uh, you can uh, get a cytochrome surge, surge, surge <laughs> rented lips, um, which will give you more DNA from popping the orange uh, and the, you know the orange DNA bubbles. Metabolic jump, you get more DNA from popping the red biohazard bubbles. Catalytic switch, you can uh, get the get higher DNA from popping the blue cure bubbles. Metabolic hijack is where I'm going to stick around because the red and orange bubbles will be popped for you. You'll see later in this video what I mean. Uh, you have mutation genes, which uh, change, you know, the curability or uh, mutability, you know, yes or no, uh, whether or not you can you know, mutate its transmission uh, vectors on its own. I, I just keep it here at Genetic Mimic because harder to cure is good. You also have uh, transmission uh, genomes uh, land-based, air-based, water-based. Uh, this one suppression, the plague is more likely to cross a close land border, which actually can be good if you are, you know, in a situation where um, you're going to find yourself exposed a little too early. Native biome, your infectivity will increase in the country you start at, but. Aquasite, that's the one I usually stick with. It's a, it's a good standby. Uh, environmental genes, uh, these will 
tell you in which environment your pathogen will thrive in. Uh, rural, urban, water, air, or give you a minor bonus in everything. I keep it on extreme of five because that works. And of course, evolution genes. These uh, can help because you can uh, you can make it so that certain aspects won't the cost will not increase but it will on the downside make things easier to cure for the sake of this i'm just going to leave it as it is on symptostasis and uh we shall go along got your difficulties on another thing here i'm not even going to get into more than just no noting it's here uh as you master the game go through all the different pathogens and everything you will get uh, cheats unlocked um, I've been doing good enough without, so. <laughs> and yes, you can name your plague. Just for some bizarre reason, purple nurples just, <laughs> just popped in my head. So, guess what? We're going to make everyone in the world die from a case of the purple nurples. Let us start this. So, you start off in a location. And I am running off of a guide, so we can get this, you know, the most effective uh, play. I'm going to start right here in uh, India. And, um, shoot, I probably should look at this a little sooner because it suggests using ATP boost so that I can get my DNA quicker, but I'm not going to. So, now that you've infected a country, uh, it kind of becomes a bit of a waiting game because it takes time, even in densely populated places like India, China, it, it, it's still going to take time for the uh, disease to you know, go and really spread itself around. So. Let's actually see. Oh, as I said, uh, this is what you're going to get these pop-ups every now and again. Sometimes they will be informational, and other times they're just going to be downright silly. In this case, it's going to be somewhat informational because the, the, at the time this was uh, being developed, of course, the Rio Olympics that was a big deal, so uh, they've incorporated that now. Um, one of the things we're going to want to start is our transmissions. And despite what the guide says, I am actually going to start by uh, evolving water. speed things up just a little bit. Since I don't have to concentrate on um, popping bubbles, I can just sit here and um, watch this thing grow. And of course it means my DNA will uh, also increase. Oops. No. One thing I did mention, I mentioned uh, de-evolution or devolution, whatever. Um, that does occasionally cost, uh, DNA. And here's one of the, uh, Danish Mafia becoming too powerful. Heck, I didn't even know that Denmark had a Mafia. So, um, I'm going to concentrate again on just, uh, ensuring that the spread will happen. I mean, it's a really... The whole concept of this game to me is quite interesting because, um, you know, as this spreads, I mean, you can see how it spreads, and also your starting point is important. Um, when it comes to bacteria, you definitely want to start in a uh, high population areas that we have far greater chance of more and more people becoming infected. 
now you just notice this watch this it just it's just exploding in India right now let's get that going we're asymptomatic uh, I want the resilience up so yeah we're good medicine in Australia is slowing the infection okay uh, this is important of course because you will have the opportunity to bolster um, your resistance to medications, antibiotics, and whatnot. And that's done right there. But I'm going to throw in some more resilience. Oh, shoot. Remember what I mentioned. So I want to devolve this. I don't want... I don't want the world to know this bacteria is uh, here just yet. And I'm sort of flying by the seat of my pants on this one at the moment, so... Um, it's now more infectious than the common cold. So, um... To do this... One other thing, yes, you are definitely going to want to evolve uh, resistance to cold because your northern um, Scandinavia, Iceland, Greenland, all those are going to need. They're going to need the resistance so that you can. Uh, actually have it spreading out there. In this particular uh, game I want to point out, there are three nations, or three particular areas that are a complete pain in the ass. And that is right here in Greenland. Morocco. Oh, Morocco got good. Good, 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 good. No. And then bad. We do not want... We don't want any evolution there. Good. So, thankfully, it did spread here to Greenland. Greenland, Iceland, for some reason Morocco, I don't know, Madagascar. Those areas seem to be the biggest pain in the ass when it comes to getting them infected. Thankfully, we managed to pull this off. So, um, now that we have a good amount of now that we seem to be going quite well we can continue to uh, build up the resistance to uh, cures and antibiotics this is something that's going to be happening soon this is also part of the reason why you want to remain asymptomatic until uh, the whole world becomes infected. Because once the entire world becomes uh, infected, then you just let everything go. Okay, as you can see right here, the infection has spread to all nations, but these nations right here, Greenland, Sweden, Canada, and Finland, still have healthy people. Uh, though I think that's not going to last very long. One of the things you got to wait for is an announcement that will pop up that there are no healthy people left in the world. Then there it is. Everyone in the world has purple narpals. So, now, here's where you want to start letting all hell break loose. Uh, start with coughing, pneumonia, pulmonary fibrosis, total organ failure. That works. Immune suppression. All right, that works too. Now, now the world sort of notices that oh, there's a disease, and they're going to start shutting things down, and then they're going to start working on the cure. But depending on what you have uh, done, insofar as uh, the symptoms and everything. You will most definitely want to evolve 
other things. Uh, insomnia. Whatnot. One of the things, of course, you're going to want to do is right over here, you have lethality. You want to increase your lethality to maximum level. Because you want... Oh, great, 25% complete. You want your... Um, lethality to outpace the cure so and then you see all these countries they're going into complete anarchy because of purple nurples <laughs> so okay let's really ramp things up now that I have um, DNA to do it we're just going to really make things go nuts. And as you can see right here, I'm near moments away from having completely killed the world with a bacterial infection. The scary thing is, is a lot of the information that was used to make in this game uh, actually is stuff studied by the CDC. I mean, when it comes to the real world, um, pathogens. There you go. Um, we have successfully destroyed the planet, killed everyone, with a bacteria called purple nurples in 703 days. In just a little over two years. We only allowed the cure to progress 40%. And, uh, you know, there you go. That's uh, bacteria and uh, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Uh, next video, I am going to move on to a virus. And we're going to see how much fun we can have destroying the world there. Uh, so, I mean, I do, I do. I'm going to admit fully I have a lot of fun with this game simply because there is so much going on, especially the more difficult the scenario, um, the more challenges you're going to have. I just threw this one in, you know, more as an introductory. Uh, I will probably be ramping up the difficulty level uh, with successive videos. Anywho, um, that's it for this one. Next time will be viruses and probably working the brutal see how well we do there or if I completely fail as I have before so until then keep yourself healthy get your flu shot and come back for more videos um, see how many I can get out this week until next time I'm Nerical Murakami see ya